what's good y'all we back with another video i'm my voice sounds a little groggy getting over a little bit of a cold or something but it's all good so what i want to do today is compare the newly integrated sound id reference plugin for room correction inside the universal audio apollo with the arc studio i plan on doing a couple of comparisons and give my overall thoughts on both of these systems and let you know which one that i ultimately think is the best in the end if this is something that you might be interested in follow me All right, so basically the sound ID reference plugin from Sonarworks and the Arc Studio from IK Multimedia are both room correction softwares. They both use an equalization curve to detect the issues that you might have inside of your room and correct that to a more flat sound level coming out of your monitor speakers. Both of these you can buy as just the software or plugin versions. With the Sound ID reference plugin from Sonarworks, there are a few different levels of the plugin that you can get. You can get it for just correcting headphones. You can get it for correcting headphones and monitors. You can get it for correcting headphones, monitors, and surround sound systems. And you can also get it a standalone plugin for the Universal Audio Apollo that corrects the monitor outputs of the Universal Audio Apollos. Now with the Arc Studio, you can also get the software by itself or you can get the software with this hardware unit right here. It has two inputs and two outputs for your left and right monitors and also USB input, output, and a power supply. In addition to that, both of these units do have specialized room correction microphone that you can get separately or with the arc studio you can get it all as a package now this is the microphone that comes with the arc studio it's a very small lightweight microphone it's made out of plastic um not heavy feeling doesn't really feel hefty it doesn't feel like it's gonna break or anything but it's extremely lightweight now this is the sonarworks sound id reference microphone as you can see it's a lot longer and it's made out of aluminum and it's a little bit heavier than the arc studio microphone and this is both of them side by side to kind of give you a little bit of a size comparison in the two microphones as far as the setup I have done a video on the Arc Studio in the past already. I'll put it in one of these corners or something if you want to watch that. The Arc Studio setup is very quick. It doesn't take long at all. There are two setups that you can do with the Arc Studio. One detects seven different points in your room and the other one detects 21 points in the room. And even if you do the one that detects 21 points, it still only takes maybe 10 minutes. It's pretty quick. It's not hard to do at all. The Sonarworks Sound ID Reference Plugin Room Detection is much more thorough than the Arc Studio, and it detects, I believe it's 32 points um, off the top of my head. It detects a lot of points, but it takes a lot longer to set up than the Arc Studio. It probably 30 or 40 minutes at the minimum. I will say that it is probably a more accurate measurement of the room though because it does use sonar and you can hear it uh the sonar sounds as it's telling you where exactly to place the mic before it detects the signal so like i said the sound id reference plugin setup seems much more thorough and it seems like it could potentially be more accurate than the Arc Studio, just based off of my opinion. Now, in actuality, let's take a look at the room correction curve that both of these systems detected. So now, as you can see, I have both the Sound ID reference plugin from Sonarworks at the top, and also the Arc Studio system here at the bottom. Now, if you're seeing what I'm seeing, we have a very similar curve that was detected by both systems now what that does for me is basically tell me that they're both detecting similar things in the room and i'm gonna say that they're both probably pretty accurate since it's almost the same identical curve now if they were detecting two 
completely different looking EQ curves, it might have gave me a few question marks as of what these things are doing, but they're both saying that they're finding the same things wrong with this particular room. And I do believe a lot of this can change or it could be different depending on the size and shape of your room and also the monitors you may be using. Now, this is also the before curve. So this is what both of these systems actually detected. Now I'm going to go into the sound reference ID plugin and show you what the EQ curve is saying that it's going to correct. So this is what the sound ID reference plugin wants to correct the monitor output to. Um, now this also has a dry wet knob on it that um, the Arc Studio doesn't have, but I'm going to leave that at 100%. Now, if I go into the Arc Studio, this is the before curve, turn those off. And this is what the simulated after curve is going to be. Just from the look of it, I do kind of think Although there are some imperfections here, I think a little bit of that will actually help it sound more natural. So I'm not necessarily mad at that. And it brings up the high end to that more flat line where this has a bit of a drop off in the high end up here. Um, I'm not sure how much of a difference it's gonna make in actually listening, but we will go back and forth to try to gauge that here in a little bit just in case you didn't really get the gist of it i don't i want to make sure i don't leave nothing out this line across the middle is the uh flat eq curve what it's attempting to hit on both systems also on both systems you can adjust these this curve and you can adjust uh the output if you want to on either one both of them also have the option to simulate other brands of speakers cars tv cell phones and things like that so on the arc studio if you go to virtual monitor right here it has a list of different things that it can simulate and sound id reference plugin is the same thing so you can go here and go down to the translation check and hit right here and you have a bunch of different options of things that you can uh kind of virtually monitor, change your speakers to sound like whatever you want it to sound like. I'm not going to use that. I'm leaving it on the flat target. Both of them are on the same flat target. No extra things done. Now, the biggest difference for me, once you get all of this stuff done and set up, is where that room correction is applied. Now, with the Sound Reference Sound ID plugin that is now integrated with Universal Audio Apollo, once you've made all of your adjustments and you're done doing your room correction and things like that and everything is set up, then you can go right here and apply that profile into your Universal Audio Apollo. Now, your Universal Audio Apollo does need to be upgraded or updated in order to be able to use this. But once you have your Universal Audio Apollo and console updated, then you can use this. So you would click apply. Um, it only takes a few seconds. It doesn't take long at all. As you can see, it's already done. And now that profile is applied to your Universal Audio Apollo. The Arc Studio has two separate versions. For the Arc Studio, you can kind of get this applied to the same level as the monitor out, but you will have to use the plug-in version of this Arc Studio and you have to put that on your master track. In addition to having that plug-in version, again, we have the Arc Studio hardware unit. Now, where the Arc Studio hardware unit is different is that it is not applied directly on the master outs or the monitor outs of your audio interface. Where the Arc Studio hardware unit is applied is after you come out of your monitors, then you will either have a monitor control system or you can go directly into the Arc Studio and then out to the monitor. So the Arc Studio hardware unit serves as an intermediary. Now with the Arc Studio hardware unit here, it's already done, so it's kind of grayed out. But right here where it says store, once you selected your EQ curve and have everything set the way you want it, you can click store and it will send this EQ curve or this room correction into 
the hardware unit. Once it's stored on that hardware unit, it's locked in. You can disconnect the hardware unit from the computer completely if you wanted to. And again, the hardware unit is connected between your audio interface or your monitor control and your monitor speakers. So the room correction does not affect the main outputs of your audio interface at all. The only thing the hardware unit affects are those two monitors that is connected to it. So basically with the hardware unit, you could turn it on and leave it on at all times if you wanted to, and you shouldn't have any issue. Now let's go to the Universal Audio Apollo real quick. So I have the newest version of console right here. Now in this new version of console, you have this right here, which is a headphone out where you can add the sound reference ID for a headphone and you can have a different correction profile for each headphone. So if you got one pair of headphones on headphone one and, and a different set on headphone output two, you can correct each one of those differently and apply that. That is separate from the monitor outputs. Now the sound reference correction that I just used is on the monitor output. So you can click that. And this is that EQ curve that we just saw the correction from the sound reference ID plugin. So this is what will be applied to the main outputs on the Apollo. Now, as far as the Arc Studio is concerned, this is the plugin version of the Arc Studio plugin. And this is the one that you would have to put on the main outputs of your DAW or whatever it is that you're running audio through in order to hear the room correction. If you are putting it on the main outputs the same way that the Apollo is affecting the audio. This is not using the hardware unit. This is software based only. So right now I'm gonna disable both of them. So the Arc Studio is turned off and disabled. And now I'll just disable the sound reference plugin that is integrated into the Apollo. All right, now I have a beat that I've been working on and I'm going to play it with everything turned off. Now with it turned off, you should hear it normally. I would recommend headphones or listening to it on some monitors. And this is gonna be kind of interesting and I'll try to explain my way through it as best I can. Might not use all the proper terminology, but I hope you understand what it is I'm trying to say. Now, again, this is with both room correction systems turned off. Now, for the most part, <clears throat> this section should sound pretty normal. And what you are hearing right now should be the same thing that I'm hearing. Now we're going to a section with the drums. And you should still be hearing it pretty normal. Now, where I notice a difference in what you hear and what I hear, will be once I get into a section with the bass. So let's go into that bass section so I can kind of discuss it a little bit more. And so right now, you should be hearing it normal. I'm hearing it normal. We are going to do is enable the room correction. Now, the room correction is bypassed. When I enable this room correction, is where the room correction happens, but it's also where I come across some issues. So with this, let's enable it.
Now the room correction is on. Now with the room correction on, if I take my headphones off and I'm listening to it inside of the room, everything sounds crystal clear and amazing. But what I've noticed, especially in trying to uh, record videos and things like that, what is recorded, the audio coming out of the Apollo, what you're hearing is sounding a little bit wonky. The audio, especially in the bass section, is probably sounding a little phasey to you right now. But what I'm hearing sounds great. Let me bypass it. Now with it bypassed, what I hear in my room is a lot more, it's a lot more bass heavy. But it should sound normal to you. Now when I enable the room correction again, you should notice that the bass sounds phasey. bypass enable bypass all right so now I'm gonna disable it all together So you should be hearing it normal again now. Okay, now that is running it through the sound reference ID plugin. So the issue for me is that it does correct the room and make everything sound a little bit more flat. Pulls out some of the bass because I do feel like I got a bass overload in the room. I would say it's probably going to make it a lot easier to mix with this on. Now the issue is with it being on the master output, if you are doing any kind of real time exporting, uh, especially if you're using analog gear or you're running a hybrid setup or anything like that, you will have to remember to either disable or turn this plugin off or bypass it when you do your export or the audio is not going to come out the way that you intended. So that's just going to be something that you're going to have to remember. If you look at the description of the plugin, you're supposed to be able to just set it and forget it. But in my opinion, especially if you're doing real time audio exports and things like that, that's definitely not going to be the case. Now let's talk about the Arc Studio. So I made this beat in the MPC and I have the Arc Studio right here on the last insert of the master out. Don't have anything else on the master channel, just the Arc Studio. So now we're gonna pull that up on the screen. And as you can see, the correction is turned off. I do kind of have it level matte. So I turn this down a little bit because I want it to be very a very similar output to what the Apollo is. And this should have a very similar effect. So I'm gonna play it right now. The room correction is off. Let's turn it on. It does feel like it brought the high end up a lot more than the sound ID plug in, in my opinion. And it sounds like similar issues with the bass although it doesn't sound as noticeable as the sound id plug-in but i do hear it a little bit it's turn the correction off and 
and this should sound more normal to you. Turn it back on. Turn it off. Now, again, this is the Arc Studio. They're both doing very similar things. But in my opinion, where the Arc Studio takes another leap is right here. Now, this is another version of the Arc Studio, but this is the main Arc Studio plugin. And this plugin right here is connected directly to the hardware unit. Now with this version of the plugin, the main difference is when you enable the correction or disable the correction, you won't hear a difference at all because that audio is not going out of the main outputs whatsoever. The only person that will hear a difference in the way that the room sound is me. So it doesn't affect the main output. It doesn't affect real time exports, anything like that. It only affects the monitors going into the room. You never have to worry about turning it on or off or if it's going to affect your mix or your exports or anything like that. So in that perspective, the Arc Studio gets a big plus for that. Now, does that mean that the Arc Studio room correction is better than the SonarWorks version, I would say that depends on the way that you're planning on using it. Now, if you need headphone correction, if you need a surround sound system correction for your room, if you need more than just your main monitor outs, the Sound ID reference plugin would probably be great and the best thing that you can go to because you have all of those different things that it can correct. Now with the Arc Studio, you're just gonna be able to correct one pair of monitor speakers. So those are kind of my pros and cons for both systems. I think that they're both pretty good in terms of setup. I love the Arc Studio setup. It doesn't take long at all. You can get done really quick and be good to go like that. The sound reference setup, as I said before, it seems to be a lot more thorough, but it takes a lot. Make sure you have an hour set to the side in order to set up the sound reference plugin if that's the way that you decide to go. Now, as far as cost, the Arc Studio system, 249, it's on sale right now, so it's about $50 off. So that's actually a, not a bad price. The unit is really small. You can kind of fit it anywhere. You shouldn't have problems finding the space for it. So that's a good thing. It also comes with the microphone and the software so you can use it as a plug-in or just a standalone version, which I, I showed you both of them. So all of that comes together for the 249 or you can get it for a little bit cheaper if you just buy this hardware unit by itself or you can buy the microphone by itself or just the software. But again, if I was to recommend a purchase, if you were going to get this, I would say just get the full package. Now, as far as the sound ID reference, you can get the microphone by itself for $89, or you can get the SonarWorks sound reference ID, and this has the Apollo plugin that comes with it. This is $200, but this does not come with the microphone. So if you get it and then add the microphone on, it'd be about $288 a little more expensive than the Arc Studio. And this does not come with a hardware unit. There is no other hardware other than the microphone. A little bit more expensive, but not much, not much at all. And just to show you the package deal they got, you can get the SonarWorks with the measurement microphone and with the Apollo room correction right here for 349 if you buy it directly from SonarWorks. It's a little more expensive than getting it through Sweetwater, and I actually got it directly from them. And let me tell you, I would prefer to order Sweetwater. And I probably should have went to Sweetwater first. Because if you get it directly from them, don't expect to get it for a week or two. Because the shipping was pretty slow. It took me a while to get it. Now, if you're getting this for multi-channel, surround sound, and all of that, 
with the measurement microphone and the Apollo room correction add-on and a virtual monitoring add-on, looking at $700. 398 with the virtual monitoring add-on. But this right here would be the one that I recommend. And this is the same one that I have. I think that I'm probably mostly going to be using the Arc Studio because the Arc Studio is kind of an actual set it and forget it type thing and it only affects the monitors. If you don't want to buy another hardware unit and you just want to integrate it into your Apollo, this would be the one that I would go for. Now, ultimately, what I believe I've decided to do is use both of these room correction systems at the same time to a certain extent because you can't use both of them at the same time on the same output. They're incompatible in that regard. But what I'm planning on doing is using the Arc Studio on my main monitors only. So the only thing that will be affected by the Arc Studio is my main monitors. And I'm going to use the sound reference ID inside of the Apollo, but I'm only going to use it to correct headphones. So the headphone outputs will be corrected by the Sonarworks Sound ID directly in Apollo, which doesn't affect the master outputs. And the Arc Studio will only be affecting the monitors, my main monitors. So nothing will be enabled on the main, uh, main outputs of the Apollo. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, but that is what I'm planning on doing with both of these systems moving forward. Now, that being said, I hope you found this video interesting and I hope that it helped out your decision making process just a little bit. If at all, let me know in the comments and I will leave links for everything that I showed you in the comments as well, meaning the sound reference plugin and the Arc Studio in case you want to check it out for yourself. That's all I got for this video. And I thought this might be some helpful information that I can just put out in the world because I've been, because I've had the Arc Studio for quite some time. And now that this has came to the Universal Apollo, I decided to check out the Sound Reference ID plugin. The Sound Reference plugin does have something like a 21 day trial. So you don't have to just buy it straight out. You can get the trial, check it out, see if you like it or not. That's all I got for this video. And I'll see y'all in the next one. I'm out.